Well, it's that time to look back over the year, take stock on what's been accomplished, and the lessons learned. My name is David Patton. When I started photography, I wanted to make art. But with bills to pay and a family to feed, I decided it would be better to be a working photographer than a starving artist. So I took a job as a photojournalist. 25 years and thousands of assignments later, it was time to go back to my first love. Come along as I follow my passion trying to create art that shows the essence of nature in a photograph. I'll be sharing my successes and my failures in hopes to inspire and educate. This is my journey. This is Riding the Edge. This is something I've done for many years, long before I had a YouTube channel. When I was working as a professional photographer in a pretty fast-paced job, at the end of every year we would put together our favorite photos and it gave us a chance to kind of slow down and take in where we've been. And that's something that I've kept going since I've left journalism. I think there's a lot of value that can be had in sitting down and assessing how the year went. If I had to sum up the year 2022 in a short sentence, it would be, it was the year of the zine and 35 millimeter. So last year, while looking back at 2021, I realized that most of my photography that I really liked, that I felt like kind of represented me as a photographer, was shot in 35 millimeter. So at the beginning of 2022, I decided I was gonna consolidate. Loading a roll of film into a new camera is like coming home. Back to where it all started, the beginning of my photographic journey, in the spirit of exploration, in the spirit of discovery. That's where it all started for me. And it started with a roll of 35 millimeter film. My digital was 35 millimeter, so I decided my film would be 35 millimeter as well. So early in the year, it was about testing. I was testing new cameras, film, film developers, just trying to get it dialed in before I really got serious about going out with 35 millimeter film. I did a comparison between Ilford's Delta 100 and Kodak's T-Max 100 to see what differences there were between them and to see if those differences were enough to make me lean one direction or the other. I've got to say, before doing this comparison, I had a lot of preconceived ideas on how these films would compare. I think a lot of that came from reading photography forums and I just kind of got this general idea of how Delta 100 would compare to T-Max 100. What I expected from Delta 100 was a nice tonal range, but something that was grainier than T-Max 100. I do think the tonality of Delta 100 is a little bit different than T-Max 100. Not drastically. To me, it feels just a little punchier, maybe a little bit more contrast. They both scan very well. Where I thought I would see the biggest difference was in the grain. And in this comparison, I was really surprised at how well Delta 100 stood up against T-Max 100. In fact, some of the frames, I felt like Delta 100 might have had a slightly finer grain than the T-Max 100. That's something I really did not expect. I used a yellow filter on this image of this covered bridge, and it looks to me like the Delta 100 showed the effects of the yellow filter just a little bit more. I mean, we're talking slightly. And once again, there are a lot of variables that could play into that. But for this one image, it did look like the, the blues in the sky was slightly darker with the Delta 100. It really doesn't do me that good to analyze every exposure, every frame 
in this comparison because they're so similar. And I don't think you're going to see that much difference on YouTube. You're going to just have to trust my eyes when I say I see a slight difference. Although this is pretty anticlimactic, this comparison has helped me decide what film I'm going to be using. And I'm happy to say I would use either one of these films. A lot of it will be just what's available to me, what's the most affordable. It feels good to know that no matter which one I pick, I'm going to be able to use it and get excellent results from it. If a picture doesn't turn out, it's not going to be because of the film. I could scroll through and point out different aspects of these images, but there's really nothing in them that I couldn't change. <laughs> it's just a very workable film. It's very manageable. When I scan a negative, I don't expect to get the final image in the scan. I expect to get a working file. It's kind of like a raw image. I want to make sure it's just it has enough detail in the highlights and in the shadows and then I, when I, once I get it into my editor I make the fine adjustments. So often photographers or, or people want you to pick a side. It's always got to be a side. Canon versus Nikon <laughs> or you know PC versus Mac. Well Delta 100 versus T-Max 100 it's, it's kind of a draw you know. It, uh, just whatever you like. A lot of it just depends on your shooting style and how you develop your film. And over the year I've had a few cameras go down and one of our subscribers, Robert Gully, sent me an N80 to, uh, to help out the channel. And I also went out and bought a Nikon F5. Something a little more robust Built more like a tank on those days where I didn't want to have to worry about rain and, and that kind of thing. I've got a new zine. I've got a new zine. And it's in color. I did three zines over the year. Pretty productive year for me. <laughs> I started with a retrospective type zine focusing on the color photography I did in my early years. It was photography all shot on 35 millimeter slide film. Besides me wanting to see it in print, I thought there might be some photographers out there who hadn't used slide film or printed with it. I thought it'd be, uh, be nice to show them what it, what it can look like in print in a magazine format. I thought it turned out pretty good. My second zine was focused on covered bridges in Oregon. It was a black and white zine. It was an issue of my Sing Monochrome. My third and final zine of the year was a summer project. This focused on a creek, the area around the creek in the foothills of the Cascade Mountains. So the idea was to focus on this area and photograph it throughout the summer, giving myself a deadline for this project. 
it was a summer project. So it started at the end of June, and then ended in September. So it gave me a chance to get out to the creek in the areas around the creek quite a few times. It's probably the most productive I've been in summer in a long time. It's not my favorite season to make photographs. This scene project also ended up being a eight part video series on this channel, Making a Zine. If you haven't seen it, you might want to check it out. And this project was a 100% 35mm black and white film. It's the first all black and white film project I think I've done. If you haven't seen any of these zines, I'll leave a link in the description. You can preview them for free. I, I love it when people get a chance to see my work. So head on over there. So after my last zine, I decided it was time to take a break from zines for a while. Three in one year for me is a pretty pretty good amount, pretty productive. <laughs> so I decided I'll take a break from zines for a while and focus on the print. I used to sell prints on my website years ago. I was never happy with how I had it set up. So this year I want to get that nailed down. I want to figure out what sizes I want to do, what I want to print it on and come up with a working plan to share my prints. So, if 2022 was the year of the zine, I'm hoping 2023 will be the year of the print. So to end today's video, I thought I'd show some of my favorite images of the year. It's been a pretty interesting year. It's been productive. It's been very rewarding. And I appreciate you coming along. So until next time, Thanks for coming along for the ride.